Lately, I've been checking out the Neumann NDH30 headphones, and I have some rather strong opinions about them. How do they sound? Are they well made? Are they comfortable? Are they fatiguing to use? Having owned these for a little while now, how's the user experience? Do they represent good value for money? And are they a set of headphones worth recommending? All that to come. As ever, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bits you want, no trouble. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers and it would really make my day if you could just take a minute to hit that subscribe button. It costs you nothing, helps me out massively and I appreciate it in advance. I thank you. And just to say I bought these with my own cash and this video is completely unsponsored but is made possible by my Patreon backers. The idea with that is any funds from Patreon, I put back into the channel, I buy gear to review, I do an unbiased review, and then I give the gear to my backers by way of a giveaway. If that's of interest, it's a great way to support the channel, and um, yeah, it'd be amazing. So check it out, it's all linked below. Onward. So starting with the features of the NDH30s, and of course, they are open back, but I would say these feel slightly more closed compared to others. Neumann say the purpose of these was for them to be tuned to match their fantastic KH series of studio monitors, so that there's a real feeling of continuity between the two. Now, as it happens, I actually own a pair of the Neumann KH120 monitors, which you can see over my shoulder. So this really appealed to me. These are 120 ohms impedance, which is not crazy high, it's also not crazy low, but I haven't had trouble driving these with any device, even plugging it into my iPhone. I found that three or four clicks down from highest max volume was a really comfortable level. So I would say Neumann have really kind of hit the sweet spot with 120 ohms. The published frequency range is 12 hertz to 34 kilohertz. And looking at the frequency response chart and corresponding EQ curve needed to achieve a flat response in software like Sonarworks, you can see that there's the usual subtle roll off in the bass almost ruler flat mid-range and a few high frequency peaks and troughs. Be under no illusion, this is a remarkably neutral frequency response chart compared to a lot of other headphones, but you know, more on how it actually sounds in just a bit. Having low levels of harmonic distortion on a set of headphones is pretty damn important, wouldn't you agree? Well, on this set, the THD is 0.03, in fact less than 0.03, which is the lowest published THD that I've ever seen on a set of headphones. Most headphones in their specs say lower than 0.1%, and you might be thinking, is there really a big difference between 0.1 and 0.03 THD? And yes, yes, and it's huge. It makes a huge difference. But now let me show you what you get in the box. And here we have the Neumann NDH30. It's a nice little package that you get. And I have to say, I was immediately struck by the, the styling. That was the main thing. And then when I picked them up, they feel expensive when you hold them in your hands. Yes, they move around, they swivel, but everything feels kind of nicely dampened. I like the large right and left inside the ear cup with the orange accent. That's really cool. And when you extend them to make them bigger, this feels really classy. It's, again, really nicely dampened. As for the other things you get in the box, well, it's pretty minimal. You get a cable, just the one straight type of cable. Instructions, warranty card, that kind of thing, and just a soft bag. No hard case, which I know some people will be disappointed about, but I don't really care. For me, these are not for traveling, so I don't need that hard case. The soft case, however, is nice for just storing them. I quite like this cable. It's It feels nice quality. I like the weave around the exterior. That helps it to kind of not get all tangled. And it's not too heavy. Let's move on. Next on to build quality, and I have been really so impressed with the design and build of these. They feel just really modern uh, and made with just really tight tolerances all around. You get plenty of aluminium, which I love, amongst a host of other high quality materials. I love the feel of them. When you expand them, it feels really premium, like something you'd find in a luxury car. I also love the velour ear pads. Yep, I get they're not for everyone, but I'm definitely a velour over leather or equivalent ear pad kind of guy. 
The straight style cable that you get with it is definitely my preference, but I know there are people that would have preferred a coiled version. There is a coiled one that's sold separately. I'm sure some would say that it should be included for this price, but personally, I appreciate Neumann not including extra stuff when it's just not really necessary. The cable locks into the right ear cup by twisting it, which is pretty cool. The weight is 352 grams, which I would say is on the heavier side of medium weight. For context, the Sennheiser HD 650s are 260 grams, which is a pretty common weight for open back headphones. On the heavier end, the very expensive Audazy LCD-X are 612 grams. Ouch. So overall, I don't mind the weight of these. They are heavier than I'm used to from my other headphones, but I will say it didn't take me long to adjust to the extra weight. Moving on to the user experience side of things, and I just mentioned the weight of these, but as for comfort, I would say these are quite excellent. I would say they're a shade not quite as good compared to my Sennheisers, but they have the oval shape ear cups and these are kind of circular. But I would say these do feel better made and more uh, luxurious for want of a better word. As for listening fatigue, um, I am someone who suffers with listening fatigue when I use headphones uh, of a particular type for too long, usually closed back design. Um, I'm happy to report I haven't had any fatigue from these whatsoever so far. I've been using them for quite a while now and for long periods of time and nothing. As for the sound quality, I find these to be just wonderful. Sophisticated, classy and open with great separation of instruments. However, they are very neutral as I mentioned and this is definitely my preference. There's no pumpy, hyped sub or sparkly highs to speak of. They remind me more than anything else of studio monitors. It's uncanny. Now I have a bone to pick with some of the reviews for the NDH out there and a few to break. You might stumble across a review on soundguys.com online who say that these lack top and bottom end and rated the NDH 30s as being pretty average, which what? Did they even try them? Well, look, scratch a little beneath the surface and you start to realize that their rating system is badly biased against open back design headphones that have a neutral character. And it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty terrible. The NDH30s get penalized for isolation, which is kind of ridiculous, as well as other less relevant categories like connectivity, portability and features. Which begs the question, what are they even doing reviewing studio headphones? Do they need a completely different scoring system for intentionally neutral sounding open back headphones? Because right now these are at a huge disadvantage and I think it does these superb headphones a real disservice and is misleading for readers. Beware. When I first put these on I remember I was in the middle of writing a track and I immediately noticed a whole load of errors in the song. Uh, you know, I noticed odd noises on guitar tracks. I noticed some weird bass frequencies. I even noticed a synth pad line which was slightly misaligned by a little bit and it was kind of obvious after I put these on. Now I attribute this in part to the exceptionally low distortion levels of these. It really just helped me find all of the errors in my track in exactly the same way as I would be able to with my studio monitors. If you use headphones for any kind of analytical listening, I really highly recommend checking out the Sonarworks Sound ID reference. It's not a sponsor. Um, it's just, it's amazing software. It's actually kind of game changing software that has hundreds of frequency response measurements for, you know, hundreds of different headphone models. Simply find your headphone profile and Sonarworks will apply an EQ curve to counteract its natural frequency response and, in theory, make them sound more flat. And you know what? It bloody works, doesn't it? I tried this on all of my headphones and all of them sound, to my ear, more complete, more balanced, and I actually prefer the sound of all of them with Sonarworks applied. I know this sounds like an ad, but it's really not. I just love this software. And um, I would say that 
with when it applying it to these headphones, they are fairly neutral anyway, which helps. But once you apply Sonoworks, they are just the most ruler flat I've ever heard on a pair of headphones. And just to do a sound comparison to my other headphones, if you happen to own those, the comparatively to my Sennheiser XG 650s, those headphones have definitely more of that open back roll off on the bass frequencies. The NDH 30s have less of that. They're more flat, I would say. The Sennheisers also have, I would say, a touch less mid range detail, lower mid range detail. But the top end, these two are, I would say, equal. They're both excellent. I would say where the Neumanns really pull away is the way that they present the song to you. They separate the layers much better and they really show off the, the nuance. I don't really know how to quantify that, but you know, that's that's it. Compared to these biodynamic closed back uh, DT770 Pro, these are the 80 ohm version, these are definitely more hyped in the low frequencies and high. Um, and they definitely have a more kind of boxy, uh, they don't have the spaciousness that um, open back have. So um, they're not really comparable, but I just thought I'd give you uh, just a, a point of reference. And speaking of other headphones, now it's time to look at the value for money of the NDH30s and some good alternatives. Well, my recommendation of a place to start being a bit of a Sennheiser fanboy is Sennheiser, and they have the HD650s, which I own and love. These are not chump change, but they are, I think, a lot for your money. Or there's the revamped HD660 S2s, which are kind of just a slightly higher end version of the 650s, but you cannot go wrong with these, either of them. And then there's another open back design headphone that I really want to check out, and that's the Shure SRH1840. They're a really similar price to the NDH30s, and just like the two Sennheisers that I mentioned, people love these Shures. Another great headphone producer is Biodynamic, and of course I should mention their DT1990 Pros, which are a shade less than the Shores and the Neumanns. Whilst these are meant to be very good, a lot of people mention some funky high frequency things going on. I still want to get my hands on a pair of these. And then finally we have the Audizy LCD X, and these of course are not price comparable, as these are over a grand but people will still compare because, you know, they're out there. I'm personally really not convinced that these are for me as good as they probably are. Firstly, I'm not a fan of the feel of the leather ear pads. I would certainly have to buy some third party replacements of these. The price is of course a consideration, but the other main issue with these is the weight. I already mentioned they are 612 grams and that's 74% heavier than the Neumanns, which are already heavier than I'm used to. If you own these, I wanna hear from you. Let me know about my concerns there, please. Moving on to the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros, cause I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Let's do it. So starting with the pros and the construction, I would say is exceptional all around. Love it. I found the comfort to be superb once you adjust to the slightly weightier nature of these. I even love the velour ear pads, even though I know this is pretty subjective. These are the flattest, most neutral headphones I've ever heard, and even more so with Sonoworks. They have a really revealing sound that's engaging, super clean, whilst feeling still musical. These are especially good when paired with Neumann monitors. The experience of switching between the two is eerie. The the user experience is sublime. I didn't want to take them off. They are a joy. And then the cons, and the RRP is not a small amount and should be a purchase that takes consideration for anyone. These are great value versus Order Z, but not so good versus many others, such as the Sennheiser HD650s. I'd say they're higher quality than the HD650s, but arguably not £250 better. And then there's the weight. Just to be clear, these should be considered medium weight headphones. They may take some getting used to if you're coming from using lighter ones. The NDH30s are arguably not for the audiophile crowd or for casual listeners, although I still love them for general use. These are definitely more for analytical listening. It doesn't come with a hard carry case, but come on. These are studio headphones for use in quiet environments. I'm not sure they'll ever leave my studio. Finally, to my opinion, and I want to start by addressing the cons sort of, that were excluded, and you'll see why. Firstly, they are open back, something that I see as a pro, but many will see as a con. It just means that you're not gonna be able to use them in particularly noisy environments, and um, that's fine. And then there's the impedance, which isn't 
super low, which means that it's going to be harder to drive for some devices rather than others. These are things that make it onto some reviewers' cons list, and I, I just don't think that's right. You should know these things before you buy this product, and any reviewer that's, you know, giving these any kind of con because of those things, I think the review should be discredited. So I don't hold it against them. It's no secret by this point in the video, you will have guessed <laughs> that I, I love these headphones so much and they have become my primary pair of headphones. They're just a symphony of design, build quality, balanced sound and luxurious feel. It's an easy recommendation for anyone who prefers or requires more analytical listening. I understand headphones are really personal and when reviewing them, there's probably more factors that matter to the end user compared to any other product that I review, especially given that they're something that you wear. So I welcome the wealth of differing opinions in the comments section below. What are your favorite headphones? Do you own the NDH30s? If so, has your experience been similar to mine or has it differed? I want to know, I'll be down there as much as I can be. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio recording, of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until the next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.